What's going on, guys? And welcome to Rabbit's Used Cars. I know what you're thinking. Damn it, Rob, you're wearing a hat. I'm not bald. Just had a hell of a day. Been running my ass off. As you notice, we have no car here. There's no cars anywhere in here. You know why? Because I sold them all. I'll be honest with you, if Kobe left title of that damn motorcycle, they'd probably be gone. I've been selling them so much so fast. I'm too good at my job. But don't worry, we got more coming in. We just got a little brief pause in the action. You know, since we ain't got no cars to talk about, it, we're going to talk about some people. I'm that kind of guy at a party. If you ain't got nothing good to say, come sit beside me. We're going to get along just fine. Being in the car business, I've said this a hundred times, you meet interesting characters, buyers, sellers, whatnot. And, you know, I've been wanting to bring some of these stories out, and some of them have been trying to construct a way to say them, or tell them, rather, and not give too much away because they hit a little close to home. But they're entertaining. And they ain't things you're going to hear on VinWiki. I mean, literally, Ed would shit a goose if he knew some of the things that I've seen. Maybe even done. Here, we're a little edgier. We're kind of like VinWiki's unruly cousin that likes NASCAR and smokes cigarettes. No, we don't like NASCAR. Anyway, but you know, you meet some interesting characters. And, you know, you meet some of the best people in the car business that are good as, gold, good as gold, that have been my friends for years. And you meet some that are trying to think of the best way not to get demonetized and not bleep it, but say how I feel. Not good people. Something that a lot of you already know, you know, about the car business, and especially in the specialty cars, classics, exotics, drugs run rampant through it. You got to think about it. If you were selling illegal substances with large returns and you needed a way to make that money clean, how could you do it? Hmm. You got to think the perfect money laundering scheme is to, or model rather, is to buy high-end things, sell high-end things for profit, which turns bad money into good money. Hmm, what does that? Exotic cars, collector cars, ooey. This guy didn't sell exotic cars, he didn't sell collector cars. And, I, and I'm going to tell you numerous stories about the same person. And this happened right here in South Carolina. It's been several years back, and I'm pretty sure it's safe to tell it because I'm almost positive the man I'm talking about has passed away. I'm almost scared to Google him for fear of being followed by the Fed. That's how crooked this guy was. So there was a man that owned a Cadillac dealership in South Carolina selling brand new Cadillac. Family started the business, been around for years. You know, father started it, passed it down to son. Father passed away. Son hits the ground running. Let me stop there to explain new car dealerships and how they work. Whether you're selling Kias, Cadillacs, or Ferraris. It's called a floor plan. They don't own any of the cars out front. Very few dealers, let me rephrase that. Very few dealers own their inventory. 95% of them are what they call floor plan. Floor plan is those cars that are sitting on the front line are financed and they make a payment on them just like you make a payment on your car. But they don't make a payment on one car, they make a payment on everything on the lot towards their floor plan. So you got to think about it the longer that car sits, it's actually costing them money. So basically, it's a, it's a double edged sword. One, it helps them get inventory. Two, it's an incentive to sell those damn things as fast as humanly possible because the more payments you make on it, the less money you make on it. All right, pick it back up. Well, you got to understand some things are less expensive to sell than others. So if you're selling Fords or Chevys or Kias or Hyundais or whatever, naturally compared to Cadillacs, that's the reason most of your Cadillac dealerships are usually smaller because the cars cost more. Not so much now. Now every damn thing's just gone sky high. But if you ever notice, Cadillac dealerships are always going to generally be a little smaller. And there's a few exceptions in big towns, but as a rule. But this dealership was decent sized for the area. But they floor plan their cars. 
Well, the son, who was a bit of an entrepreneur, got tied in with some guys in Nicaragua. Basically, he made a deal with the devil. We're going to give you the capital to be one of the largest catalyte dealers in the southeast. No floor plans. We're going to back you 100%. Zero interest. We just want our investment back. You know, lots of red flags are popping up here. You got to understand, you know, how banks make money off of loans is interest. So this guy doesn't want any interest. And I know what somebody's going to say, well, they have 0% car loans. 0% car loans still aren't free. That's just worked into the price of the car. That's the shell game. Shuck and jive. We'll move on to that later. These guys say, we can totally fund your dealership. Established. So it's not causing any ripples or any waves. You sell off the inventory you got. And you'll have the capital to totally front your entire life. No floor plan. No payments. Oh, man, that's a deal. You got to think about it. You know, it takes a little pressure off. You got that floor plan payment. You know what I'm saying? And, and every car lot has them. You know, used car lots have floor plans. I mean, floor plans are been around for years. He thought about it. He took the deal. And I don't know the exact dollars amounts, you know, but he took the deal. They started selling cars. They started making money. They started moving them. Moving cars. And you got to think about it. You know, when you buy hundreds of of Cadillacs at a time, you start getting some breaks. And I ain't talking about just hold back. I'm talking about serious breaks, paying up front. The thing is, it really didn't raise any red flags because this dealership was established. They'd been around for a while. They did their homework when they came to this guy. And they were selling cars. They could sell Cadillacs cheaper than anybody. And they were flying out of the front. They had 30 salespeople running across the front of this dealership. And this is not that big of a town. And people were coming from all around to buy Cadillacs from here because the price was right. And this is way before internet shopping and social media. Hell, it was before the internet, period. This was, this was late 80s, early 90s. And this dealership was rocking. And I'm talking about within a couple years, next thing you know, they'd knock the dealership down, build a brand new one in its place. They put those little trailers, like the little construction trailers up. They never stopped during construction, just selling cars. I'm talking about, you know, construction tape and things blocked off. Cadillacs jammed everywhere you can put them and send them right out the front. Just boom, boom, never slowed down. Even had a trailer for just the finance office. And they would literally go from one trailer to the next. Never slowed down. They built this gorgeous dealership. Glass for days, starting starting to get some attention. Big ads in the paper. Nobody sells them cheaper, and they were moving them, moving them, moving them. Well, naturally, you know, his buddies were happy, and he was happy because he's making killer money. But when you make killer money, you tend to do stupid things. Number one rule of any of kind of mess like this is you don't want to make like a big scene about something. He owns a new car dealership. So if you want to go buy a new Rolls Royce and he did, nah, he sells a lot of Cadillacs. You know what? You want a nice vacation house down in Florida. Not everybody knew it, but the people that did, he sells a lot of cars, gorgeous house on a golf course, lake in the front yard. Man, spending a lot of money, but he's making a lot of money. They sell more Cadillacs than anybody around. Then he started making dumb, dumb moves. Buying racehorses, which anyone that's in the horse business knows that's a losing proposition. And then he made probably, in my opinion, one of the dumbest moves. Well, to this point in the story, the dumbest move he made. He went out and bought a Learjet. He's making money. A lot of money. The only problem is, is one, you know, not just anybody can fly this jet. And we're not talking about a puddle jumper. We're talking about something Bill Gates flies in 
this guy that owns a Cadillac dealership in small town South Carolina has. And is he selling that many Cadillacs? Is he making that kind of money? You know, not just anybody can fly this thing. He sure as hell can't. So he decides, I need to hire me a full-time pilot. And this was the funny part. Vacations, expensive stuff. Matter of fact, the very first Louis Vuitton item I ever seen was Louis Vuitton luggage this man had. This is big stuff for South Carolina. And keep in mind, I was a small guy, but I knew these things. Learjet. We hires him a pilot. And you know, you can lease pilots, you can rent pilots, you can hire pilots. But you know, you gotta go through stuff and you know, they don't, yeah, beckons call, you know, you don't clock in and be like, I'm ready to go boss. That's what he wanted. Well, any pilot, you know, worth his salt, he's going to have to sign a contract, a deal. So he did. He offered to pay this man $150,000 a year to basically wear a pager. And within 30 minutes of being notified to be at the airport ready to fly anywhere. And the only catch was he got two weeks off a year and he had to pick his dates ahead of time. Any other time, 24-7. Whether they're flying to Florida, Nicaragua, wherever, they had to be ready to go. Signed a three-year contract with this guy, paying six figures. And I understand what you're saying. Well, six figures, Rob, that ain't that big a deal. We're talking about 1990. And 1990 to 2021 money, that's about 400000 a year. And this guy, he's just sitting around twiddling his thumbs. He gets a page, he meets him at the airport. He's ready to rock. These spending habits start raising some eyebrows. And it gets the government involved. You know, some things aren't adding up. Where'd this money come from? So that's the problem. You're raising too many eyebrows. You're, too many people are noticing what you're doing. And that's the thing. You get that mentality. You can't be stopped. And anybody can be stopped. And the thing is, once you get to this point, you really start spiraling into dumb shit. We had the Fed already looking into what he did. And unfortunately, when you're in that type of business, the product comes through there too sometimes. You know, and you start sampling. And in the words of my boy, Notorious B.I.G., never get high on your own supply. You know, picked up quite a habit. And, you know, naturally, the people around him got introduced to these kind of things, and they picked up quite a habit. You know, understand, that's how drugs work. You know, make you feel like you're on top of the world. I mean, make you feel like you can fly. And you're always chasing that high, because you're never going to get it. Single guy, man about town. He's always been a ladies' man. So naturally, he was popular with the ladies. This man's got a Learjet riding around in a Rolls Royce. Literally bought more Cadillacs for women than Mary Kay. Literally. As a matter of fact, that's where I stole that saying from. It's from this guy. He ends up messing around with a girl in the business office. And that's kind of like his little work fling. And she gets pregnant. And so I'm going to stop there. Remember what I told you. When you get to this level... You start doing dumb things. If you ever notice all the movies you see, Scarface, any drug movie, they all go the same way. Blow. All these movies go the same way. Can't be stopped. And one dumb thing kills it. Lady in the business office. Like I said, it was his little work love. And uh, she got pregnant. Ain't no big deal. Got plenty of money. We take care of her, you know. You know, hell, she don't even have to work. Just give little mama some money. His son was born, and he signed the birth certificate with cocaine in his system. That really started raising some red flags. And of course, the baby was fine, but he did have traces of cocaine in his system. Where did this come from? And then, of course, the man that signed being the daddy. The mama was nobody. Everybody knew who this guy was. He claimed it. I got him looking a little harder into his organization. The next thing you know, they found out the Fed was already looking. 
Where's all this big money going? Or where it's coming from, actually. They know where it's going. He kind of catches wind of this. And, and this story was actually shared to me by this guy's accountant. And then what the cool part of the story is that I've seen both sides of it. I've been on the outside looking in. I remember it, you know, back in the day. His personal accountant is a dear friend of mine. And we talk about this story. We talk about these people all the time. But the thing that was funny is, you know, listen, you know, you got to think about it. You know, if we don't straighten up, we're all going down. But it was too late. So it's time to dump some stuff. Well, his plane, he sells it off. But he's got this pilot that signed a contract. Making this big money. This guy got paid six figures. What's he going to do? You don't have a plane to fly anymore. He delivered parts for the parts department for the Cadillac dealership. He drove a little Mitsubishi truck, delivering parts, making six figures. And this dealership started to come unwound at this point because word spread like wildfire. Now the pilot is driving the parts delivery truck. And then next thing you know, the product has run rampant through his dealership. We got guys ODing in the bathrooms and just all types of craziness. Front, front line still selling cars like it's going out of style. Back in, going to hell. I mean, you got customers in the front and you got a man that's ODing in the bathroom at a Cadillac dealership in small town, South Carolina. Now keep in mind, all at the same time, one of the delivery guys is in the parts department. They had a truck coming in to deliver parts. And he was stoned out of his mind. Been up for days. He fell over, passed out, right at the loading dock. Truck backs in, kills him dead. So now we got the cops. And it was an accident. But now you got cops everywhere. And of course, you know, they run tests and obviously tell he was on drugs. Well, then that gets him in trouble with General Motors because General Motors is really big on stuff like that. They'll throw a pop drug test on any employee with a dealership because you're a franchise, just like a McDonald's franchise. You're a Cadillac. You're a GM dealer. And you've got guidelines you got to go by. And this dealership wasn't flying. So now not only is he in trouble with the Fed and then, of course, child services because of the kid and then the local cops because of the dope, now he's got franchise problems. General Motors takes his franchise from him. He gets popped and spends many, many, many years in prison. I don't know what happened to his friends from overseas. He lost it all. And the thing you got to think about at the end of the day, what, where did it start? Where did the problems lie? You had a dealership that has been around for 40 years, a staple in the community. And in two years, like a bottle rocket. But the only problem about a bottle rocket is they shoot up quick, but they also come down quick. Got to remember that. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Rabbit's Used Cars. I'm looking into this one, right? All right, because we got one here, one here. I mean, you gotta think about it. Being a truck driver in the 70s was the equivalent of being like Billy the f***ing kid. But anyway, story for another time. Pause. Play. Did I say that right? Nicaragua. Does that sound right? Sound good? Well, not quite 400, probably about 350. Still, a lot of money. Every year. Cocaine and Cadillacs.